Imagine that we have a lot of conditional statements that we need to handle. For example, let's say we have a value called x, and we'll say if x is equal to 1, we'll print 1. Otherwise, if x is equal to 2, we'll print 2. If x is equal to 3, we'll print 3. And otherwise, we'll print other. There's a better way and a more concise way to write this same exact code using match. To do this, we'll start with match. Match x. And say if x is equal to 1, then print 1. Otherwise, if x is equal to 2, then print 2. And then we'll do the same for 3. Okay, and then how do we handle the case for else? If x is neither equal to 1, 2, or 3, then how do we handle this? Well, we can do a catch all case by putting an underscore. Okay, this is a simple example of match. We can also match on multiple cases. So let's say match x, and let's say we want to match x for either 1 or 2 or 3. Print in 1 or 2 or 3. Otherwise, we can say print other. Okay, let's execute the code. And then we get 1 and 1, 2, or 3. Now imagine the case that we want to match x for 1 through 10. Of course, you can use this syntax and then expand all the way up to 10. But there's a better way, a shortcut. You can say match x, and then do 1 dot dot. We also want to match 10, so say 10. Let's print between 1 and 10. And then otherwise, you'll print other. Execute the code, and we get between 1 and 10. If you wanted to know the exact number that was matched for x, then we can use that sign. Let's use this example. x will match a number anywhere from 1 to 10. But what exactly did it match? Is x equal to 1? Is x equal to 2? Is it equal to 3? Or is it equal to 10? To see what number we matched, we'll say i. Let's call this variable i, and then say at. Let's also print this out. Matched i. Okay, and then execute the code, and we get matched 1. Similar to a conditional statement and loops, we can also return values from a match. Let's first create a enum. Let's say enum animal. And the animal will be, let's say, cat, dog, and mouse. Let's also put a dog in. Okay, and let's create an animal. Let's say that animal equals to animal colon colon cat. Then let's match this animal. Match animal. Here we can see that the value of animal is a cat. But imagine the case that we have some variable named animal and we don't know what the value of this animal is. It can be either a cat, it can be a dog, duck, or a mouse. We don't know. So in this case, we'll use the match statement. And for each animal, let's return the sound that they'll make. For example, if the animal is a cat, then we'll return meow. Otherwise, if it is a dog, we'll return wolf. And if it's a duck, then we'll return quack. And if it is a mouse, then I don't know what sound the mouse makes. So let's say for any animal that is not a cat, dog, or a duck, we'll return a question mark. Here we're using a match to return a string literal. Let's assign a variable to this value that is being returned. That animal sound equal to. Then don't forget to put a semicolon after the closing curly braces. So now this animal sound will be one of the string literals, meow, wolf, quack, or question mark. And then let's print this out. Print Ellen. Animal sound. Animal sound. And then execute the code, and we get animal sound is meow. Now one benefit of using a match instead of an if-else conditional statement is that if you forget to handle one of the possible cases, then the code will not compile. For example, the value animal can take on a cat, dog, duck, or a mouse. Over here, we're handling the case of cat, dog, duck. Otherwise, we're returning a question mark. So, for example, let's say that we don't put this, let's comment this out. So now inside the match statement, we're only handling the case for cat, dog, and duck, but not mouse. And notice I get a compilation error saying non-exhaustive patterns. You can also see the details by trying to compile it. Cargo build. And then it says pattern animal mouse not covered. So this is a nice feature of match. If you forget to handle a possible value, then the code will not compile. Let's put this catch-all statement at the end back. And now the code compiles. Writing code in Rust, you'll also write ton of match statement using options and results. So let's look at an example. Let's say that x of type option of i32 equal to, let's say, sum of 1. And then let's use the match statement on this. Match x sum value, sum b. Then we'll print this value. Print sum b. The other possible value is a none. We'll say print ln none. 
Okay, let's execute the code and we get sum one. And the other example is a result. Let's say that rest of type result. For OK type, let's return a number. Let's say U32. And for the error type, let's return a string with a capital S. And let's say this is equal to OK of, uh, let's say 10. And now imagine the case that we have a variable called rest of type result U32 and string for the error type. And imagine that we don't know what the value it contains. In this case, we will use the match statement match rest. OK, let's name this to bell. Then print ln. OK, bell. Otherwise, we know that it is error with some message. Let's say message. Print ln. Error with the message. Execute the code and we get OK 10. So these are some examples of using match.